Um, <coughs> we have a Yisod, a foundational point that I want to discuss with you guys. And that is Sharashim. With this secret, you will be able to decode any Hebrew word, certainly the verbs, and have a deeper understanding of the Shon HaKodesh, the holy language that is Ivrit. And that is three points. Shirashim prefixes and suffixes with two details at the end. This might be familiar to you. You might have seen it, but I want to show you and really make sure you understand this. Shirashim literally means the roots. The roots are the basic building blocks of a word. Any word that has a shoresh has something to do with the meaning of that shoresh and the different ways that it's conjugated, meaning it's built up and broken apart, will change the details of that meaning. Every, almost every word has a shoresh. It's usually three letters and some basic meaning. For example, shin lam and chet means to send or something that has to do with sending. Shin mem ayin has shema is hearing, something that has to do with hearing. Bet nun he is building, or has something to do with building. Depending on how the show is arranged and exactly what the other letters and nukudot are there, the specific meaning of that word will change. That is the basic idea. For example, if you take, again, that example I gave, shalach, you can even just send it, the difference is, as who's doing it. Shalach is he sent. It's this just the Shoresh, past tense. Shalcha, she sent. Shaleach, he is sending. Shalachti, I sent. Nishlach, it was sent. Shaliach, it was a messenger. Those are all the same Shoresh, but different specific meaning based on how that word is called conjugated or broken up. The Nekudot and extra letters added. Now, another example. Achal, Aleph, Chaf, Lamed, means to eat something there. Achal means he ate, again, it's just the Shoresh. Achla, just the Shoresh with the hay, she ate. Ochel, she, he is eating. Ochelet, she is eating. Maachal is food, again, it's the same Shoresh, becomes a noun. Neachal, then at the beginning, it was eaten. Achalti, I ate, or Neachalti, I was eaten. Try to avoid that one. Now, one of the rules you'll see in the Chumash, and that you're expected to be able to do, because it tells you who's doing it, it helps you identify the character, is a prefix. A prefix comes before a word. It's the letter that comes at the beginning of the word, that becomes part of the word, and it'll change the meaning of the word. Who is doing a verb can be identified by the word. It's a prefix, or the prefix of the word. That should have an apostrophe. Or the suffix, which is the end of the word. We'll see those in a second. It'll usually be that a prefix makes the verb future, and a suffix makes a verb past tense. There's some exceptions. We'll get to those as well. A vav at the beginning of the word means end. It's end this, or, or that, actually. It could be. It is not considered a prefix for our discussion, with the exception that we'll see at the end. The rules of a prefix are as follows. An aleph at the beginning of a word means I will. It's first person, that person, that the speaker is I. Yud at the beginning of the word, with nothing else, is third person, he will. Again, these are all future. Future, the prefix, pushes it forward, the future. Yud and a vav at the end, so yud, aleph, chaf, lamid, vav, yechlu, they will eat. And a tough at the beginning could either be you, for a male, or she, third person, one or the other. It's probably the most confusing one. And a tough at the beginning and above at the end, techlu, it means second person, you all will, to more than one person speaking to them, kind of like y'all. And a tough at the beginning and a yud at the end, techli, will mean you will, talking to a female. A nun at the beginning will often mean we will. There's some exceptions there, but that's generally what it means. These letters at the beginning, certainly in Chumash, certainly for the words I'll be asking of you, 
will tell you exactly who is doing a verb. All you need to know is the meaning of the shoresh. You don't even need to know that part, though, to identify who is doing it. The opposite is suffix. Suffix is at the end of the word. You can also have it be identified by that. Same deal. A suffix usually makes it past. And again, a vav at the beginning is not going to be considered as prefix or suffix. Very few verbs start with vav, so you don't usually have to worry about that in confusion. Now, a suffix is going to be the same except looking at the end. T as a suffix means I did. Ta means you did for a boy. T means you did for a girl. No suffix means he did. Or the word without a suffix plus hey or Tough hey means she did. U at the end means they did. Nu at the end means we did. Tem means y'all did. You all, boys and girls, or mixed, or boys and or boys and girls mixed. And ten at the end means y'all did just for girls. For example, um, achalti means I ate. Achalta means you ate for a boy. Achalt means you ate for a girl. Achal means he ate. Achla means she ate. Achlu means they ate. Achalnu means we ate. Achaltem means you ate. Y'all ate. And achaltem means y'all ate for girls. Now, there are certain letters that don't always appear, meaning they're part of the Shoresh, but they could fly away. Those are called Yona letters. Almost always, there are some exceptions. Yud, Vav, Nun, and He are those letters, which is why they're called Yona. They spell the word Yona. Also, I heard them called honey letters because they get stuck somewhere and they fall off. Honey is sticky, but I like Yona better because I think it's a clearer mashal. It flies away. If you know that one of these letters is part of the Shoresh, it is possible that the letter is not there it is possible that it flew away, in which case you'd have to look for the other two letters of the Shoresh to identify it. It's very, very, very rare, if ever, that more than one letter will fall out. It can happen, I think very infrequently. I can't even think of an example, but it is very rare that more than one, so usually you have at least two letters to work with, and you know if one of these letters is the third letter of the Shoresh, then that is your Shoresh. The other exception is a magic Vav, or Vav Haipuch. In the Torah, we do not do this in modern Hebrew or the Shon, a Vav at the beginning of a word, a verb specifically, can flip the tense. So for example, Vachaltem, even though with the suffix it means you ate, it could change it to be you will eat. Kind of like the phrase Vayomer, or Vaidaber. Based on the conjugation, there's a Yud at the beginning, Vaidaber, it should be, and he will speak. In the Torah, that means he did speak. In the Torah, a Vav at the beginning can flip the meaning of the Shoresh. For Shoresh quizzes, I will never ask you with a Vav Hayipur, but when we're learning the Chumash, you should know this could happen. Now, all your tasks with left it now is to find the meaning of the Shoresh. If you have a word and you don't know it, you can identify who is doing it, and then you should look up the Shoresh, and you can plug that in and understand what it means. This is a very, very big deal in understanding Hebrew, particularly in Chumash and Tanakh. With this, you'll also be able to do well on all of these assignments and these learning activities we do.